Okay, time for another rant of the guru. <laughs> so it's been a while. I haven't made videos in a while because I was demonetized uh, because I talked about sea lot and knife fighting and martial art things that apparently may uh, <clears throat> may hurt people's feelings and YouTube has a way of limiting the view and access of people that may say things that are not the accepted norm, okay? As we see what's going on in life today, whether it's martial arts or politics or even spirituality. Um, so anyhow, I wanted to have a talk today about uh, Kundalini awakening and Qigong so, a little bit to give you a little bit of a background, you have um, in martial arts, internal martial arts, you have uh, internal energy or subtle energy. And the same thing in yoga and qigong or tai chi or, or any type of spiritual discipline that involves some type of awakening of energy opening of energy channels, opening what the Hindus would call chakras or marma points as they call them in India. Um, in the internal martial arts, they might not use the same terminology as the Vedic Hindu yoga systems, but they have meridians, they have pressure points, they have uh, dantians, you know, areas of your body where energy can accumulate, energy can move. So it's very common, and a lot of people come to internal martial arts or yoga through different areas. Some people go do yoga because it feels good, it looks good, it's very, um, it's in the now, it's popular, you know, for people to do yoga. And there's a very commercial side to yoga. Same thing with martial arts. There's a there's a commercial side to martial arts. Usually the external is focused just on the physical, the combat side, or the getting a good workout, you know? And there's nothing wrong with any of that. That's all very good. Then you have the more internal uh, schools, whether it's in yoga or martial arts, where it's, it's more hardcore in the sense of the training is more difficult. It's less uh, commercial and it's not for everybody. It's not really for the masses. It never was intended for the masses. And so you have people that um, think that one is the same as the other and it, and it really isn't. And now I'm talking more about the energy side of internal martial arts and meditation and yoga, um, sometimes referred to as Kundalini yoga or um, you know, sometimes they even call it Tantra Yoga, okay? There's different <coughs> yogas that activate this inner force or inner power or inner energy. And the same thing can be found in martial arts like Silat, uh, Kung Tao, you know, the internal arts like Tai Chi Chuan, Xing Yi, Bakwa. Uh, and you see it in, in a lot of systems where... <coughs> certain energy postures or certain postures will activate energy and activate the energy channels and certain movements will activate the meridians um, for example in old school hatha yoga the yogis would hold the postures for a long period of time to get the postures to awaken the energy or to get whatever energy center they were focused on energized and awake and open but this took hard work. So real yoga is to yoke, right? To, to, to put on the yoke and walk with the yoke. That's, but if you think of it like farming, you know, the, the, the ox or the bull has to put on the yoke and plow the field. What does that mean? That means you have to work hard at it. Nothing comes easy. Just like in Kung Fu, Kung Fu means hard work, okay? Uh, just like in Penchak Silat, Silat, in some schools, means the achievement of all your training. 
So a practitioner of that particular art or, or that particular style, um, in some circles, they can't even use the name saying, oh, I do Silat, unless they've achieved something or unless their teacher has said, hey, yes, you've achieved a certain level. Now you have permission to say that you are a Silat practitioner. Okay, so again, it comes back down to hard work and effort and time and grade and practice and uh, spending time doing something. So what am I getting to here? You see it in martial arts, you see it in yoga, you see it in, in a lot of facets in our life. Um, in any industry, you see it. You see people who want the fast way and then very few want the real way. And what is the real way? The real way requires hard work on the effort of the person seeking whatever skill or knowledge that there is that they're wanting to achieve. Okay? So, back to Kundalini for a second. Um, <clears throat> Kundalini is an awakening that happens in the individual, and it can happen spontaneously. It can happen through derived methods that help activate it. Or it could happen um, by accident. And what is this energy? This is a life force energy that gets activated within a person's body, usually at the base of the spine. And it goes up their spine, opening and awakening their channels all the way through their glands, their, their, their endocrine gland system, and all their chakras all the way to their crown. Okay, And usually that is considered a kundalini awakening. Now, there's two flows of energy. You have a flow of energy that goes from the bottom up, okay, which is uh, usually how people experience it. And then you have one that goes from the top down. So one is a yin going to yang, and one is a yang going to yin energy. And then you have uh, an implosion that goes from out to in. Some people experience from out, from in to out, like a decompression, and then some people experience a compression in, like a, like when a sun stops being a sun and it turns into a neutron star. Okay, so there's different stages of awakening of this energy, and you might say to yourself, "Well, what the hell does this have to do with martial arts?" Well, martial arts is not just about combat, it's a way of life, it's a way of, uh, of understanding um, health, longevity, and in the old times, martial arts went hand in hand with combat, with um, healing, with prolonging life, which is longevity, with creating. Okay, so one of my teachers told me and taught me, and he was my kundalini meditation teacher, who taught me a lot about Qigong, Dr. Glenn Morris, may he rest in peace. He said that in the old days, the energy was awakened for three reasons, either to create or destroy or to heal, okay? And contrary to popular commercial belief, Yoga was actually part of the warrior system, the Kshatriya, okay? If you look it up in India, the warrior class were taught specific exercises and methodology to heal themselves in battle, to strengthen their body, to be able to combat for long periods of time, to be able to carry heavy equipment for long periods of time, and to keep their energy at an all-time high level to perform at a high level okay so these people were taught these systems of uh, I, I want to call them energy yoga if you will let's use that term each culture has their own version of it they were taught these systems to make them better warriors and to make them better at self-healing self, -healing, self um, improving their bodies okay and when they were using these systems in times of war, it would help them in battle, in the battlefield, and it would also help them heal faster. Now, when they were not in times of war, they would use them to prolong their life, to improve their health, improve their state of mind, and improve their physical body. 
So it's always been a mind, body, spirit thing. Then later, they would teach the masses, okay? So if you were a warrior or a bodyguard to the king or to the Raja or to, in uh, like for example, in old Indonesia, the bodyguards had their own art, both for fighting, for healing, and for energy cultivation, okay? Then what they would do is they would teach people who were not uh, the royal guard or not the military, and they were taught things for civilians. And what was for civilians? Maybe some type of martial art, maybe some type of uh, energy cultivation, and some type of meditation that would help them out on some level, okay? So this is how it was done. And I'm talking about, you know, 5,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago. If you look in Indonesia, you had the Majipahi Empire. The Majipahi Empire, you had royal guards, okay? And you had uh, people that protected the temples, people that protected the kingdoms. They had to have a very high level of energy for fighting, for healing, and for creating, okay? And if you look at the old Hindu systems, like look at uh, Lord Shiva, the god Shiva, right? He is generator, operator, destroyer, okay? It's the same concept. And you have the same trifecta or triangle, mind, body, spirit, creating, healing, destroying. Doesn't mean you have to be a destroyer. Doesn't mean you always have to be creating. Doesn't mean you always have to be healing. But the point is you would learn those three principles in your warrior path, okay? Now, um, in today, if we look at today, we have a lot of people that practice uh, martial arts, that practice yoga, that practice Tai Chi, that practice Qigong, that practice, um, for example, Reiki, uh, whatever you want to call it. There's all these systems and they're all very good depending on what it is that you want to do. And if somebody wants to learn internal martial arts, <clears throat> but they're not learning how to also fight, their internal martial art is incomplete, okay? If someone wants to learn yoga, but they're never experiencing, uh, let's say, a kundalini rising or any type of deep meditation experience, their yogic practice is incomplete. On the same token, if somebody's learning how to heal, but they never actually learn how to build any energy, there's nothing to heal with, okay? So, my point with all that is there's outer and inner, okay? In Indonesia, they call it <coughs> luar and dalam, okay? You can be a part of a school or a part of a, a, a method, let's say, and you might be learning some of those essences, but you're learning the outside of it, which never has the internal. So think of it like you're getting the eggshell, but you're not getting the egg, okay? And this applies to martial arts, to combat, to healing, to spirituality, to meditation. You can apply it all, all over across the board, and you can see it across the board. <clears throat> one of the reasons I had, I used to teach yoga and teach meditation openly, and one of the reasons I had stopped because, um, I didn't care for where yoga was going commercially. And I noticed for myself that everything I needed of yoga and meditation was in my silat and my kuntao practice, okay? Now that's me, everybody walks their own path. I'm not gonna tell you what to do or what you should do, I'm just giving you my experience. My teachers, all of them, uh, practice some form of meditation and in Silat we practice moving meditation that's what your jurus are that's what your forms are we practice qigong those are moving meditations sometimes we practice meditation in movement sometimes we practice it in stillness okay and we do it for three reasons to improve our physical health improve the energetical health of the body and improve our own ability to heal ourselves and heal others at the same token, to improve sensitivity, to improve a better mind-body connection through every movement. Okay, so if you notice, a lot of the internal arts will practice either extremely slow 
or they'll do a combination of slow, medium, and fast. They don't do everything fast all the time because they need, or, or you need to learn how to connect your mind and your body and your intent through every movement you make, okay? That's what separates an internal martial art from an external martial art. It's a connection from the inside out, okay? And it has those methods of practice. It has a way to do it and develop it. You cannot develop these things overnight. You can't develop them fast. You can't develop them quickly. There's a misconception in all the internal arts, whether it's yoga or or uh, qigong or tai chi or silat or kung tao, that you can get a transmission and then overnight you you are a master. It doesn't work that way. You can get a transmission from a real teacher and something inside you will spark and then that will get your energy and your movement and your understanding uh, together and working better. But you still have to put in the work. You still have to put in the Kung Fu or the Silat or the yoga, the yoke. You've got to take that yoke and put it on your back and plow the field. So anyhow, um, my rant today is that is whatever you do, practice it for real and find a real teacher. God bless you.